Logging into the ACM for the first time, you will need to change the default password. The default password is 1234. Once you have logged in, you will find yourself at the setup wizard. From here, we can import a system that we already have or click next to start a new project. We're going to click next and move forward. This next page is quite important. It provides hyperlinks to all of our setup guides that we have made in order to make sure that your switch is set up correctly for this system, as well as a diagram to show you how to connect the ACM between the home and business network and the video network that will be running the multicast transmitters and receivers. Once you are sure everything is as it should be and set up correctly, just click next. We now need to tell the ACM the rough size of the system we're setting up. You have two options up to 75 products or 75 plus products. This setting helps the ACM to manage and minimize the traffic on larger systems when pulling in information and thumbnails on a live install. For this 2x2 system, we're going to pick 0 to 75 products. We're now ready to start scanning for products, but before we do, we need to be aware of the two methods we can use to set the system up. Method one, this is the method that we'll be using today. This will allow the ACM to poll out automatically and pull in all of the transmitters and receivers it finds automatically, allocating them an IP address and ID depending on whether it's a transmitter or a receiver. Method 2, however, gives you some influence over how the units are discovered, as you can plug them in in the order that you want, and therefore the ACM will assign them numerically in the order that they are found. And last, but by no means least, we need to choose our HDCP mode. We have bypass, which means if you plug in a non-HDCP source, that lack of HDCP will follow through to the endpoint. HDCP 2.2, which means it will force a 2.2 handshake for 4K devices. Or force 1.4, this is predominantly used for 1080p devices. Because we're using IP300s and 4K sources and screens, we will use HDCP 2.2. Now we can click start scan. The ACM will start to poll out for any new products, assigning them an IP address and ID based on if they're a TX or an RX as the ACM finds them. Please note, the ACM doesn't actually know how many units you have, so it will run the scan indefinitely. Once you have found all of the units, you can click Stop Scan, and then Next. Now you will find all of the units the ACM has found. Please note, sometimes you may see units that are greyed out. This is because they're still rebooting, having just been set up by the ACM, and they will return to being online shortly. Now we can configure and change the unit's names, EDIDs, and scalar settings. If we have a source connected, we can click the View button in order to view the device connected. As you can see here on TX2, we have an Apple TV connected. And on TX1, I have left the input disconnected so you can see what it would look like. Should you have screens connected to your RX, an OSD will show on the screen, letting you know the number of the RX that is connected to it, similar to what you can see on screen now. To turn this off, you simply press the OSD off button. Have no fear and do not worry. All of these settings can be changed later on. Now, let me name everything quickly, set the EDIDs and scalar settings so we can move on by clicking the next button. And now the system is all but complete. From here, we can move back to any previous stage or start the setup of a video wall. But for now, we're going to back up our configuration, which will now be downloaded, and click finish, taking us to our completed system and its drag and drop control page.